very good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i once again welcome you you know for this session i see the attendance list i think and uh, happy to uh, share with Uh, so people from uh, people from Africa, Middle East, India, Asia Pacific. I can see some names uh, uh, from uh, from South Africa also. So good to have. So good to have. Uh, Sorry for this technical glitch and uh, uh, good to see uh, good to see you all from a different regions and uh, different uh, you know continents uh, being a part of this session. This is a second uh, this is a second session. Uh, which has been, uh, uh, you know, organized uh, uh, by the PNS Academy along with the Sandro. Uh, this is dedicated to the new version of a CX series, and then we also have uh, missioning and service issues. Uh, now coming back on the uh, coming back uh, uh, on the presenters, we have uh, Mr. Babo from India, Ethan, Lucas, and Scott from China from the plant. Uh, they all are well experienced, uh, and they are in this region for many uh, in in this subject for many years. So please utilize their experience. Please please utilize their knowledge in terms of asking as many questions as you as you can. Uh, this session is for one and a half uh, hours to two hours maximum. Uh, we will at the end of the session we will be having uh, uh, we will be having uh, small polling sessions, which will, the questions will be asked. And then these questions, uh, uh, you need to answer it online. And based on the result of these questions, they will have an impact on the certificate of attendance, which we have planned to give it to each one of you at the end of the session. So with this, I would request, uh, or I would request Mr. Lucas to uh, have a mic with him and uh, start uh, the session. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, you know, once again for joining us. Mr. Lucas, you can. Uh... Hello, Mr. Worm. Uh, here is the Lucas speaking. Uh, can you give me the authority so that I can show my screen? Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay, let me show my presentation. Sorry. Uh, what is the Okay. okay, so here uh, today, uh, welcome to our webinar and uh, today I will give you some knowledge about our new update uh, commercial inverter for MENA. So first, uh, you already know that uh, for the CX series, we already uh, launched it for nearly one year and it's very successful and uh, got a uh, very good reputation in the market, and uh, but the sun growth is still not enough because uh, we are a company that's very focused on the technical and always want to supply the good product for our customer. So here uh, today I will introduce our new version of our CX series, which is the V112 version. So as you can see, this uh, inverter, uh, this new version, we add two main functions. The first one is the SPD Type One Plus Two, and the second one is the AFCI. 
uh, sorry, any problem? <clears throat> okay, if no problem, I shall continue. So you see, as I just said, we add two functions uh, for our new CX series inverter and uh, the version uh, module is V112. And so now I will show you the detail about these two function. And uh, the first one, as you know that the CX uh, uh, series inverter, also for the CNI project, the usually installer in the rooftop or in the open ground. Uh, but in this kind of situation, the inverter, both the inverter and the panel, they are very vulnerable to be lighting. So it have the big chance that the inverter get lighting. So to get a big, uh, a, a good protection for our inverter, we now update the the protection uh, to SPD type one plus two. So as you can see here, <clears throat> the permanence of the type one plus two SPD, the ability is nearly twice than before. So you see the nominal discharging is twice and the maximum discharging current is also twice, is up to 14 kiloamps. And also, uh, except this uh, 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 magnetic uh, electric lighting, it can also detect with the uh, uh, direct in lighting so you see it uh, at one ability that it can even resist uh, the direct lighting so you see to have this kind of ability the 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 protection ability is nearly twice and I even have uh, the chance to uh, resist the direct lighting so here is what we have done here for the type 1 plus 2 uh, SPD and for this type 1 plus 2 SPD, I can say that we are totally integrated in the, in the inverter. It's not like the other manufacturer. Uh, you may need to uh, purchase additional device and install it outside with the inverter. So it's quite complicated uh, and also not so stable. And uh, so we are now doing it inside our inverter. So in the V112 uh, version of the CX series, you can own this function directly inside our inverter. And the second one, you know that uh, uh, the, the AFCI function, uh, the arc uh, now in the DC side is a, a, a big danger uh, which facing in the new air uh, CNI plant. So you know that if the, the plant with the back uh, connection in the DC side, or maybe in the humanity uh, environment, or also in, in some situation, the cable in the DC side will be damaged by some situation and it will maybe cause the, the little arc. But the arc is also, although the arc is very small, but it might generate the, the fire in the DC side. So it's quite dangerous and very uh, risk in our DC side. So now we have a function called AFCI. So you know with the AFCI, uh, it's the full name of AFCI is the, it's called the arc for the current interrupt. So with this kind of device, when the arc is generated in the DC side, you will have the ability to uh, cut off the DC side. You will cut off the, the risk of the DC side, so everything will be fine. Otherwise, it may be cause the fire. So here we add the AFCI function inside our V112 version. So as you can see, uh, here is a, a detail of our uh, AFCI function. And we are now using uh, multiple uh, prevention uh, a, a surgeon and uh, it's quite uh, fast and uh, very efficient. So as you can see, we can shut down the inverter within 300 million seconds, which is the most fast one in the market. And uh, for for next step, except the AFCI function, we we also can uh, develop the uh, string level detection. Uh, when the arc is uh, is uh, generated, our inverter can detect the, in which string and the, in in where it generated the arc. Uh, and it will be launched in the, in the next year, 2021. So this function, as I can say, is quite fast and efficient and compared with the, also uh, what's the most important, we compared with the other products in the manufacturer uh, on the market, uh, we integrated in our inverter. As I said, in the SPD function, you don't need to buy uh, additional device or pay additional fee for, for this function. We are directly do it inside our inverter. And also remember, we are the most faster one and the very efficient one. So we have these two functions. One is SPD, one SPD one plus two, and one is the AFCI function. 
So this is a function we have done in our inverter and directly do it in, inside our inverter. Except these two functions, we now also expect uh, developed the two uh, application maybe you are interested in. So the first one, as we know that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, before we, I tell you the, the main function, uh, the two uh, new application, uh, our AFCI, uh, you, can, you can see here, uh, you can easily set in it why the application uh, very simple. So you see there have three uh, level uh, function you can do in the application. So one is the self-test. So when you, when you generate the, the AFCI function, uh, you, can, you can click the, the AFCI self-test to check if the function is okay. Uh, in case some case maybe the AFCI panel, the, the AFCI board maybe have some damage or some problem happen to the inverter, you may have an interest in to test the AFCI function first so you can use the uh, function reliable. So the first one we supply you uh, uh, a chance to 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 test the uh, AFCI function by yourself. And second, maybe in some cases that you want to uh, test the function by yourself, and you want to disable and enable it to check if the function is working properly. So we give you another chance to uh, disable or enable the function. So you can say you can easily uh, disable or enable the function in the application. And the second and the third, uh, as you know, the our inverter, our uh, isolar cloud has the function that when you have a, a fault uh, in the system, uh, it will generate a, a, a fault and an alarm in the main page. So you will know what happened to your inverter. So when the arc is generated and the fault and, or the alarm will generate in the, in the main page, and then you, you will know that there is an arc in your DC side. So here, when you see the uh, the alarm or the fault, and then you can to check your DC side. When you finish the problem, and you can clear the alarm, then you can make the inverter come back to work uh, normally. So here is the three function is very easy for you to set by our application. So you will have uh, your chance to test uh, or to enable or disable, or you can uh, you you can you can know what is the problem with your inverter and make it back work to work normally. So here is the three function you can set through the application and now I, I, I can tell you the uh, new application that I just uh, mentioned so the first one you know uh, not only in MEA but also in many, many other uh, areas uh, the solar industry is developed for the many years and you know that there are many older inverters that they are used to be DC terminal so which is not suitable for our a new model uh, inverter. You know, we are now all using the MC4 terminal, so it, which is not directly compatible with the old plant. So, as you know, this since it's already working for many years, so some of them maybe uh, access the uh, inverter warranty, and you want to change the inverter or replace them, but the inverter they are with the MC4 terminal, you cannot directly connect with them. So how we do? So now we have a solution. We developed a new uh, reverse combiner box, so we call it the reverse combiner box. So you can see here, with this combiner box, then you can use the big DC terminal connected with the combiner box, and then it can generate the MC4 terminal directly to our inverter. So you will have the chance to uh, replace the older inverter with the big DC terminal. Then you can use our new CX series inverter. So with this combiner box, you will have the ability uh, to reach the revamping market. And uh, here is the, is the patch, uh, what it looks like. So you will see it's uh, I use the mantle and the inside is with the copper uh, connectional uh, connection uh, parallel. So these two are the input connection and this are output connection. So you can uh, put the input uh, DC, big DC terminal here into the, into the copper connection and generate uh, the MC4 output terminal to our inverter through these two plates. So you can see in the next page, yeah, I consider the uh, old inverter, they may not only have one pair of the DC input, they may also have two pairs. So to for your flexible application, uh, we have done two different uh, uh, input uh, terminal. So one is for uh, one pair terminal and another is for two pair terminal. So you have flexible choice uh, when you use to the revamping market. 
and this is an installation and uh, which I should be enhanced because the terminal you need to uh, do it by yourself will only uh, provide the, the combiner box. So as you see the, the input, we are using the OT terminal. So please be noted that if, when you use the uh, reverse combiner box, the input, please do, do a OT terminal to connect with the uh, input DC side. And uh, the output, you should use the Europe code fly price the terminal for the output. So you will connect through the, the, the fuse. So here is the to use the fuse and here is the, the wine that you can use the Europe Cop price terminal to connect it here. So here is the input, here is the output. So you will have the different terminal for, for the application. So please be noted that when you use the reverse combiner box. And here is the dead sheet. You can see uh, uh, it's not so special, but uh, uh, it's IP65. I, you, so you can use it uh, in the outdoor. And the environment the temperature, the working temperature is uh, quite uh, large so you can use it in every kind of the situation the harsh environment is also okay and uh, yes yeah, so with the uh, without the the parameter we also have the certificate you, you see the iec and the ul so for the place where they require both require the the certificate for the uh, combiner books so we can also supply this kind of certificate and here yeah you can see uh, so here you can see uh, the the connection of the DC uh, output. They have a 18, which is suitable for our uh, 9 MPPT. So you know, 9 MPPT they have 18 uh, uh, MC4 terminal. And also, it's all although it have a 19, I saw 18 18 terminal for the for the DC connection. Uh, our CX series, other CX series such as the circuit three. 40 or 50, you can also use it because uh, the, the, all these DC terminal you can you can connect uh, any number when you use it. Such as like if you have five MPPT, then you connect ten uh, outputs. If you have a uh, uh, three MPPT, then you connect the six. So it depends on you. So it's quite flexible for you to use it. So not only our uh, 110. Uh, both the 33, 40, 50, they can also use with the reverse combiner box. And so, so here is the permanence. And the, although if you want to use the uh, combiner box, you also need to do the setting. But the setting is quite simple. Just as like I said that uh, like the AFCI function, through the application and you connect uh, with the Bluetooth or the WLAN, and the local wireline, then you will directly very easily find the setting in the other parameters. Then you will have find the MPPT connection mode. So when you use the reverse combiner box, you need to change the MPPT connection mode through the inductance to parallel connection. So here is what you need to notice. When you use the combiner box, please be uh, reminded to change the working mode. And it's quite simple, just through the application. And for, for the next part, uh, always some people are asking uh, what kind of accessories can Sangro provide. So here is a, a list that I can let you know uh, which uh, on earth the uh, Sangro can supply to you. So first one for the meter. So you can see we have a lot of brands such like uh, Sefri, Ankri, the Janitra, the Weather Miller. But uh, please be noted that only the the, the device that are marked with the red can be directly supplied with some group. So as you see, only this three meter, the DS, the Ankri DSTD, uh, DTSP1352, and also the Janita UMG604, and uh, the wet meter EM610. So only this three uh, meter we can directly supply to you. But in case some of you may not be interested in our device, we also give you the other choices. So you can see the other device you can buy by yourself. But uh, the protocol or the communication is, is no problem. Directly buy it and connect it with our inverter, everything will be okay. So it depends on you. So if you want the 
uh, device directly from us, we can give you these three charts and they are a different price level. And you can, uh, according to your own situation, to choose the suitable device. And uh, in case these three devices still not set to certify your, your need, and you can choose the other device maybe you are interested in. So here is the meter. Except the meter, we also have the metro station. So the metro station, the first one uh, is called the PC-4. And uh, this is the most popular, I think, uh, uh, very uh, popular in the Middle East. And uh, this device uh, is very uh, equipped with many, many kinds of sensors. It's very full around and can be used in uh, every situation. I think uh, you can you can certify because it has uh, the uh, irradiation, uh, the temperature, uh, the humidity, and uh, the wind speed, and something so it's quite full round and I think it can fit uh, every kind of situation. But it have one luggage is that uh, it has no certificate. Yes. So although it's very good, but uh, in some cases that uh, they are require the certificate, so you cannot use the PC-4. So this is the first one. Yeah, just like I said before for the meter, only the, the metro station which I marked with red can be used, uh, can be supplied by Sangro. The other one you need to buy yourself. And uh, the, the, the other two uh, metro station, which is the Lufter and the Capsule, we are introducing it in just recently. So maybe in before you only see the PC-4, but recently we will have these two for your choice. And uh, the reason why we do this, because these two, they are more flexible and they are separate uh, uh, sensor, such like the Lufter, they have no irradiation. In case some cases maybe you don't want the irradiation sensor, then you can choose look because they it's uh, have the temperature, have the wind, have the humidity, but they have no uh, irradiation. But for the carbon, the SMP10 is the only sensor for the uh, for the for the irradiation. So sometimes maybe you only want to the uh, irradiation, but uh, you don't want other uh, equipment. So you can choose SMP. So for now, with this, you will have a much flexible choice for your application. And uh, what is the most important one is that the Lufter and the Capdon, they will have the certificate. The both uh, a CE certificate, uh, the ISO certificate, and also the uh, accuration certificate, which is uh, the class A or class B. So sometimes the plant they may require the accuration. Uh, so you will have the Lufta and the Capzone with the class A and the class B. Then you can fit the uh, certificate. And also sometimes the ISO or IEC. So you, you, can, you can choose the Lufta and the Capzone. And it's also very flexible for you. And the other two, actually we also consider to introduce more metro stations since the metro station is more and more required by our uh, MENA customer. So if you have any any idea about the uh, no matter the meter or the uh, the metro station I and mean, you can give out the, the su 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 suggest suggestion or the advice because we are now considered to introduce a more metro station and meter and if it is very popular and we can collect your idea and maybe we will have uh, the more choice for you guys to uh, for the metro station and meter and when I, uh, in recently, uh, actually not recently, because it, this kind of application is asked by our MENA customer for many times. They combine it with the inverter, with the generator. So in before, uh, the, the inverter cannot drag a comb combiner with the, the generator. The reason is that in uh, some cases, the, 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 the load is not enough. The inverter may be generated the, the reverse power to the generator. So it may damage the, the generator. And also the generator, you know the power is not so stable. And the inverter has its own uh, assortium, you know, to connect uh, with the, the grid. Sometimes you maybe want to use the generator to simulation the grid, but uh, you know this kind of simulation is not so stable. So the inverter maybe have a frequency cutoff or, or back to online. So, 
So it's uh, online or offline frequently and it's not so stable. So you in before, we are not suggest you to directly connect the inverter with the generator. But uh, as we are know that in MEA, sometimes the grid is not so stable or the generator, you know, the fuels in Middle East is uh, very cheaper. So you may you want to, they, there may be a lot of customers, they really want to use the generator together with our solar to maximize their uh, consumption of the, the load or maybe to reduce the, the total cost of their plant. So today we are uh, noticed this application and we are finding the solution. So the solution is that you can use a third party controller uh, to connect our inverter with the generator. Then you will have the ability to let the system work stably. So you can see that here is the controller. You may need to buy a controller for the inverter and also you need to buy the controller for the DC generator. Then this controller, they can communicate with each other and to make the whole system work properly. So in this case, with the controller, with the balance of the power, the inverter will no longer generate the reverse power to damage the generator. And also the controller can uh, maximum to use the, the power from the inverter and to reduce the cost of your fuels so that uh, you can use with this controller, you can use the whole system very stable and uh, you can uh, reduce the cost of the whole plant and uh, reduce the cost of fuels and the maximum of the, the generation of the inverter. So here is the typically, uh, the first typically application is a pure off-grid mode. So with this controller, you now have the ability to use the generator to simulation the grid condition. Then the inverter can connect directly with the, the, the generator. The inverter will sync in at the generator as a grid. So the inverter can work properly. And this is the, the, the application without a grid. So you know in before this is not so possible because uh, without a grid, the inverter, the ungrid inverter, they cannot work properly. And also the, they will have some damage to the, to the generator if you use the general simulation the grid. And for now with the controller, they can balance the power and they can have a lot of uh, control assertion. So then you can make the system work, work better. And also, except the, the, the pure off-grid mode, you also have the ability to work with the grid. The controller can also control the, the grid. And so with the, this together, so you will have the grid plus with the generator plus with the inverter to have the whole system working properly. And uh, another one is that uh, you can use no, no more than uh, just uh, one inverter. You can use a lot of inverter because the controller, they can come communicate with our COM100E. So you know that our one COM100E is a device that can carry uh, up to 30 devices or 30 inverters. So you will have the big plant connected with the controller. And the controller, you, they can also connect with the generator, connect with the grid. So you will have the big plant solution uh, with this kind of generator, grid, and the inverter together. So here is the speed typically application. So the first one you see is a pure off grid with a single inverter and the uh, hybrid solution, uh, which hybrid is with the grid, the generator, and the inverter, the single inverter. And also you can carry uh, a lot of inverter. So if you have one more uh, controller with one more combiner, you can carry even more inverters. And also the, the generator, the number is not so limited. So here is the solution together with the uh, controller, then you will have the uh, solution for the off-grid or with the generator, so which is a very, uh, I think is, is have very big potential in the MENA in the future. I think many of you guys maybe have the interest in. And uh, I'll talk to so much about the, uh, the, the application. Uh, due to now, we have the, the limited ability to supply you the controller. So we are now uh, do this application together with the third party. So you know the first one is the DEF, which is a very famous uh, controller brand in the world. And uh, we are now already matched the, the controller, which is called ASC-4. And uh, already uh, many customers um, uh, already use this controller together with our inverter to realize the application that I mentioned before. 
So this is what we recommended you to use the, as the depth controller together with our inverter. So the, the application is just the same like this. So here is the depth controller, and then you can control the whole system team, uh, the whole system. The communication and also all the setting is directly done by our two companies. So if you buy the depth controller, then you can uh, directly use this application. And also some of the people they are uh, say that the depth is very expensive, or they want to have a more uh, choice of other brands. So we have a idea to introduce the other two. Uh, brand, but they are still on the testing. So I think in the future we will have three compatible brands: the Dev, the Watermon, the Common IP. So in that time, I think you will have much flexible choice of the controller. So to use this application, and uh, but for now only a Dev can be used. So uh, this is not limited, just like our metro station or like our meter. If you have more idea. Or if you know which is the most popular uh, controller in the MENA, you can give us the suggestion. So in the future, maybe we can give you more choice. So this is the controller solution for the off-grid uh, with our on-grid inverter with the DC generator. So here is the solution. That, uh, here is all the presentation. And so let's come back to, to review what we have uh, said today. So the first one, as I said, we have uh, update our CX series uh, to uh, V112 version and the two main functions. The first is SPD, the second is AFCI. So the SPD, we have uh, uh, even twice the ability of the other, of the, the, the older version of the lighting protection. And for AFCI, you will have the chance to cut off the arc to prevent the fire risk in your DC side. Uh, with our AFCI function, and it's the most fast one in the market. And uh, the, sec uh, the, the, the second the second I just mentioned is the revamping market. As I said, many of the older inverter with the PC big DC terminal they are access to the warranty, and if you want to replace them, they may need, you may need a reverse combiner box so that you can directly connect uh, the 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 PC big DC terminal to our new model MC4 terminal inverter. So here is the uh, combiner box that we supply to you to use in our CX series so you will have the ability to reach the revamping market. And the last one, uh, not the last one, and the third one that I just mentioned that we have many choice for you, uh, both in the meter and in the metro station. So here is the list that you can have references so you will know what you can use in the future. And also, as I say, this is not limited. If you have any other idea, you can suggest us, and we may introduce more devices in the future. And the last one is the application that is very popular, maybe I think in the I mean, NA, because many areas they have an unstable grid or they want to use the generator to reduce the cost of their plant. Then you will have the ability to purchase the third party controller together with our inverter and the DC generator to realize this application. And the brand that you see here, and we also not limited in the brand and in the future, we can also have the other uh, choice, I think, for the brand of the controller. So here is uh, all the idea and all the presentation that I have. So I hope that it is very helpful for you uh, for them because we have now uh, update function and more application. So hope you are very interesting in the, all the content. So thank you all. For your listening and thank you for your time. And I think uh, I should uh, make it back to Mr. Worma. So Mr. Worma, here is my presentation. If you have any comments or other one who have uh, any question, you can ask. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Lucas. Uh, thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, I think before we go to the uh, next session, we can uh, leave a session open for a discussions or on a question answers questions. Uh, it can be written uh, down on your uh, screen. You will find the questions. You can write the questions there. We can pick up and then we can speak. Or if someone wants to ask a live question, he can also do that. There is a, uh, you need to raise your hands, which is a signal there. You, you, you need to raise your hand and then uh, we can allow you, uh, we can give you the mic uh, commands and you can ask the questions.
you have any question, please feel free to ask. Um, sound, I think, uh, Varun Vikram, uh, Muhammad Nuhala, voice. So I see there's a one question being uh, asked. Uh, uh, is there is it also along with this uh, DG uh, PV uh, D, uh, you know PV uh, PV and diesel uh, this, uh, PV and diesel generator systems along with this is there also a possibility of having a battery bank? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear clearly. Can you repeat the question? The question is, uh, a PV diesel hybrid system, uh, can we also connect the battery bank? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the controller, the function of the controller is quite uh, abundant. And it can not only control the generator, but also the inverter, but also the, the battery. So they, they also have the function together with the battery. Here I just uh, list the three typical applications because many of the uh, applications they are using the, the generator as a backup power or use the, the generator uh, uh, to reduce the, the cost. So you know the battery is expensive and uh, uh, the, it's not uh, maybe some case not so good uh, like the generator to, to, to use the backup power. So here I just show three uh, typically applications. But the the controller uh, manufacturer they also have the uh, ability to compatible with the battery, and uh, so it will have a, you can you can even have the generator, the inverter, the grid, and the battery. So these four together, you will have the ability to do like this. Uh, the other question is uh, from Mr. Babak. He is asking is 250 kilowatt. Uh, you know, system. Uh, uh, does this also comes with this extra production which we have discussed in the beginning? Uh, no, this is only for the CX series. You know, the 250 is the HVCS series, so it's a different series. So this function is uh, right now, I think, only available for a CX series, oh, okay. which is 33 to 110. Okay, okay, 110. And uh, there is a request that uh, apart from DIF and COM, uh, is it also compatible with some other, uh, you know, controllers? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just uh, list uh, is uh, here, so you can see the first one is the DEF, and the second one we are on the testing is the uh, Watermon and the COM IP. So I believe these two uh, will be uh, very soon to to update. So you will have three choices. And as I just said, yeah. we are not limited about the brand. If you have any idea, or maybe the controller manufacturer, they have the willing to do the compatibility. So you can contact us and we can send the communication protocol and we can do some tests. So we can make this choice more flexible. Yeah, this was asked by Mr. Geta Lopsi. And uh, uh, sir, you can write uh, a mail to us separately uh, on a one-to-one -one basis and then uh, we can consider about the brand you are talking it uh, on a compatibility. Uh, uh, there, is a, um, there is also a, a question which is on a monitoring of the system. Uh, uh, does this, uh, you know, hybrid system, PV digital hybrid system, can be uh, monitored or configured on the same cloud, iCloud, or it, uh, or it's uh, there is a separate platform for this? Uh, no, it, it can only be monitoring by the controller platform. Uh, we can only uh, monitor the, the the inverter. So the 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 whole plant monitoring is through the controller. The controller manufacturer, I believe, they will supply you a very good monitoring plant, so you can see the whole system situation. But uh, in Isola Cloud, you can feel free to control our inverter and to see every kind of related to the PV. But for the generator, for the grid, uh, we have no ability. But uh, I think the, the controller manufacturer, as I know, the DEF, they have very good system 
So you can see the whole plant is dead and you can control the whole plant. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gaita Lapsi has again asked another question. Uh, does the compatible controller synchronize the primary and secondary DGs like PLCs uh, in, in order not to have a mismatch between the two inputs uh, between the two inputs of DGs? Uh, sorry? The question is more on the multiple, uh, uh, you know, uh, multiple generators uh, and their compatibility with the inverter and the system. So I think you have already defined in one of the uh, sheet DG1 and DG2 on this sheet, especially which is open sheet number 20. It, it's, it's been mentioned there. So I think this, you can just explain this sheet now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you mean this, this page? Oh, yes. which patch? 2020, yeah, okay. 20, 20 years. So, 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 what, what you mean? You mean the the compatibility of the generator? Yes. Uh, so this is uh, more than uh, more than one generators. Then they're uh, you know how do they synchronize between the primary, secondary, and yeah, the yeah, computer? yeah, yeah. The controller, I think, they can uh, both the. Uh, synchronizes on both the unsynchronized uh, uh, generator and also they have a, uh, not, not only the DC generator, every kind of generator, I think uh, the controller, they have very uh, big adaptability of each kind of uh, generator. As, as I know, they, they just uh, provided me a, a presentation before because when we do the, the compatibility with them, we have seen many, uh, we have to, to do many service and uh, we see that they are have very very uh, strong adaptability uh, with the generator. So not only one generator. They they, they said uh, to me before they can even control connect with the uh, 100 generator and even uh, eight big PV plant together. So they will have this very strong ability to to make a very larger system. So you you need no worry about the compatibility of a different kind of uh, generator and all the number so it's not a problem i think good uh, good lucas uh, thanks i think uh, we will leave some questions for the next sessions now um yeah, i request yeah. uh, scott uh, to take uh, scott is taking or web is taking okay okay thank you thank you thank you guys and yeah, any um, question please feel free to contact with me okay okay okay, okay. so uh, 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 yeah, this, yeah, this side, Vibob, yes. Uh, I'll take the session. Um, if you can give me the access, okay. Yeah, I'll okay, I got the access. Okay. Babab, you can also tell me when you want to run the service of the commissioning. Okay. Uh, so, hope. Uh, You can you can keep it in a presentation note. We are your screen is visible. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah. We yeah. So welcome everyone. Uh, this is a small session on uh, basically to cover the commissioning part as well as a bit on the product and the basic steps which you need to consider before installing and commissioning the inverters, especially this has a SG 110 CX. So as you know, the CX version, um, it is all around, all about a thousand volt system. That is on the DC side, it will be thousand volt. Uh, on AC side, the voltage will be 400. So let me go through. So as uh, I think uh, most of you know, um, SunGrow is a 22 years company. We are among the number one supplier, almost have 15% market share worldwide. 
um, 35 percent of our uh, employees are into r d to provide you the best possible solutions also we are among the number one suppliers worldwide basis you can see my screen clearly there is no uh, okay so this is our basic layout or the service structure worldwide basis uh, major markets which are there like asia pacific or emea or the uh, north america market so all the all those locations we have a presence also we are increasing our presence in middle east uh, also in uh, south american markets so these are the basic contents which we're going to cover there is a bit on the product introduction then commissioning troubleshoot and uh, then on the isola cloud coming on to the inverter um, they are basically uh, different versions are there but as per the applicability of the site let's say their utility scales or uh, you uh, CNI market. So based on these requirements, the product you can select. So especially for the CNI market, you can go for 110 CX. Also for marketing solution as well as uh, the cloud computing, you can go for the COM 100 as well as ISOLA cloud. Now coming on to 110 CX. This is a thousand volt uh, DC system, uh, which is co compatible with IEC and UL standard. You can use with uh, in America in Asia Pacific in Europe market, both standards are there. Uh, the best or the macro points which you need to consider is with this uh, 110 CX as a CNI solution, you will get a high yield. The it, it will save this your BOS cost as well as it is easy for the owner and it have all the grid supports function which is required by most of the discom or most uh, grid operators. Again, when we saying high yield. So that means it is have nine MPPT system with two input on each MPPT. That is total of 18 inputs. Uh, peak efficiency of 98.7, euro efficiency of 98.5, no deviating up to 50 degrees Celsius, and it have a patent PID recovery function. Also, it is 85 kgs, so it is easy to operate uh, as well as to handle uh, inverter. You can do remote support uh, updates through Isola Cloud. Also, it is uh, have SPDs, which can um, ensure that there will be no surges on the AC as well as DC side or the inverter is protected. Again, there is a PV insulation uh, resistance monitoring, which ensure your safe operation uh, so that there's any issue with the insulation resistance, uh, inverter will go trip or will not start. Again, it have a flexible block size. Mm, you can go for 1.4 DC to AC ratio. Uh, also, it provides a string monitoring. You can get uh, current as well as the voltage on each string input of the invert. Again, you have LVRT, HVRT, FRT functions as well as reactive and active power control. So it can provide all the grid support functions which is required by grid operators. A bit on the ID65 protections. Um, as you know, uh, all most of the inverters which are from the sun sun group especially on the string are ip66 uh, compared to like if you compare the fan it is ip68 which is uh, mounted outside of the inverter okay. ip6 uh, why ip68 um, because it does proof can ensure your work life or the operation life of the fan is up to 25 years and it is very easy to change as well in case of any issue So on the overview, uh, this is the front and the back of the 110 CX. Uh, you can see there's a logo uh, which is mentioned by one, which used to give different kind of LEDs, different colors of LEDs as per the uh, mode of function of invert. Uh, then there are, uh, if you see on the right hand side as well on the uh, left hand side, majorly on the right hand side, you can see the nameplate, the QR code. Uh, on the bottom side, you, you can see the MC4 connectors, input glands for AC as well as communication. And um, on the bot on the side, you can get the side handles as well as uh, mounting brackets. Uh, these are the dimensions which you need to consider before uh, installing the inverter. Uh, 
um, you make sure the inverter must install must must install uh, upright. That means it is uh, on the eye level as well as uh, upright to the inverter. It should not be on a slant uh, slant plane or any inclined plane uh, on the wall. Also, uh, it should be uh, there's a you need to consider that it should not be near the flammable material or any gas near installation uh, near to the inverter. Uh, while considering the installation, you need to also consider the, if you are installing multiple inverters or even single inverters, you need to consider the clearance gap or the creepage gap, which is uh, need to consider while installing inverter. So left and right, as well as top and the bottom. So all these uh, distance you must maintain or must include in your design before uh, going for installation. This is the basic diagram or the basic connection diagram how you need to consider uh, connect an uh, inverter. On the DC side, you connect with the PV string. On grid side, you have to connect with the RYB or the ABC. And also if you have a, a SCADA or any Matrix, you need to connect the mounting device as well. Now coming on to the basic the block diagram of 110 CX. So on my left side, you can see the number of inputs, which is go up to 18. Uh, then you have a DC switch, uh, especially three or four, based on the product. Uh, all these strings have DC uh, connection um, CTs as well as the voltage uh, detection. That means whatever the current will pass through or whatever the voltage is, it will give you individual string current as well as voltages. Um, just after the DC switch, you have the DC SPD to safeguard you from the surges which is coming from the PV side. Then moving on to the DC filter stage, and then the, there's a boot stage of, for each input, each amplicity input. Then you have the capstans uh, for the DC bus, and then you have the, um, the converging stage, which is the inverting stage. Um, then you have the LC filters, then relay, and through a uh, AC filter, it go to your grid. Um, between grid and AC filter, there is a SPD to safeguard you from, uh, safeguard the inverter from the AC side or the switching surges which is coming from grid. To control all these function, as well as uh, the faults, generation, everything, there is a DSP command which control and monitor all the aspect of the inverter. It also control the fans, the auxiliary power, as well as the uh, give you information on the LED or your app, the Bluetooth app which you have on your mobile. Now moving on to the commissioning, um, there are certain checklists which you need to do, like uh, the basic steps which I told you that how much space you need to consider, what is the dimensions, and how you do the connections on the DC side as well as the AC side. So as a layman, there are certain checks uh, which you need to consider by how to open it, how what, uh, which point you need to uh, connect, which points I do not need to connect, uh, which is our thing. So all these are considered uh, through a checklist and you need to go through, fill this checklist uh, before uh, doing the commissioning or before starting the inverter. So uh, also one more point to do, it check all the electrical parameters as well as the mechanical parameters, which is required for installation or a proper installation as per Sungo's requirements. Um, just let me, allow me to run a video, which is give you a brief idea of how to do the installation as well as commissioning. So allow me to just uh, share the screen. Uh, let me know you are able to see the video. Good. Yeah, we can see the video. Yeah. yeah. So before um, uh, doing any commissioning or installation, you need to make sure that you prepare 
your inverter as well as the required product uh, accordingly. Only then you go for the commissioning. So there is a steps uh, like pre-commissioning uh, or preparation before installation. Okay, so let me run it. Um, these are the things which you get in the box means whenever you're buying inverter so like inverter mounting brackets all the screws connectors dc connectors fasteners as well as uh, screw as well as document other than this uh, uh, im4 which is optional you're getting all those things in a box in the inverter with the inverter Make sure you uh, prepare the tools required uh, for installations.
So this was a very small video, but very uh, detailed one, uh, which gave you informations on uh, the basic steps and the basic points which you need must consider for installation as well as commissioning. So uh, if you have any questions, we you can ask, you can post, especially on the commissioning part. You can uh, drop your questions on the question box. Um, moving on to the commissioning part. Now, after doing the installation, we need to do a certain checks, like checking the DC voltages, checking the AC voltages, check the routing of the cables. So after checking all these points, uh, then only we can start inverter. Uh, also, there are some other requirements, uh, majorly from the DISCOM side, that uh, how you can do the commissioning. So th those points also need to be considered while doing the commissioning. So local requirements from the grid side need to be considered as well. Uh, now, uh, after the commissioning, uh, let's move towards the troubleshoot part or the major points or the uh, the common problems which used to occur with the inverter. Uh, we have collected those and we try to give the reasons, uh, th those issues as well as try to give you the solution as well. So before any troubleshoot or even before any doing uh, working on the live inverter, we must consider these five points uh, for the safety aspect of inverter as well as for the human safety. Um, make sure you disconnect the mains from the AC side as well as from the DC side. Um, make sure there will be no reconnection happened by any hub. Uh, you must use uh, Loto uh, that if, if there's uh, somebody doing work, it should be disconnected and should be locked. Also make sure the ground uh, ground circuitry of the system, uh, especially on the inverter part. Um, there's no, all the light parts which are there, you should be covered or open as, as per the requirement by the user manual or your requirement. Also de-energize uh, as well as energize whenever there's a uh, situation happen. In most of the cases when you're working, de-energize the system. Only when you finish your work, then only energize the system. Also, uh, while working on the inverter, make sure you can know on the DC side that how many strings you have connected, as well as the voltages. Sorry, uh, uh, sorry, I just got it. Sorry. So, uh, also make sure all the all the connection on the string are collect uh, collected properly. It should not be there. There should not be any reverse polarity or any mismatch. Yeah. Uh, on the AC side, um, make sure uh, the cable size and the termination is proper and the cable is properly insulated. So starting with the, with the troubleshoot or the fault points, usually uh, there are some uh, issues which comes from the grid side, like over voltages. Majorly what it happens is uh, the grid side voltage is going higher. In that case, the inverter sends over voltage and tripped in 0 to 0 3. So you make sure uh, you check the voltage at the EC terminals uh, by multimeter. What is the voltage coming? And accordingly set it as per the required by the inverter. Similar goes for uh, 0 4 0 5, that is under voltage. Uh, the grid side voltage maybe have uh, lower than 10% of the nominal voltage. In that case, uh, inverter will detect is under voltage and will trip 
in those cases. Again, you need to check the voltage on the AC terminal and verify uh, that is a grid problem. I mean, overcurrent, uh, overcurrent can be, uh, there are multiple reasons uh, and there are multiple failures as well. Um, most of the cases, uh, if it happens, usually the IGBT have sensed the unbalancing or the, the overcurrent, uh, overcurrent uh, on the AC side. In that case, the IGBT have tripped or the inverter have been tripped or it can be uh, the measurement issue as well, uh, the measurement card of the inverter uh, facing some issue or having some issue in that case it can also show uh, the overcurrent in the inverter and can trip on 0 0.6 again under frequency over frequency similar uh, like under voltage and over voltage you can check the verify with the grid how much frequency is there and then uh, check on the inverter uh, what is the set value and then uh, accordingly you can remove this issue Islanding, uh, usually islanding came when there is a no grid. Uh, as, as soon as the grid, uh, absence of grid, inverter will show 010 zero, zero or 10, zero, which means uh, grid is not available. 011, uh, which is DC injection. Uh, there are certain parts or certain components of the DC coming onto the AC side. That's why inverter show uh, DC injection. And there's accept uh, inverter can accept and or uh, that your transformer can accept certain amount of DC injection, but uh, as per the, the local grid requirements, this value will not cross if it is uh, the value is crossing that that time uh, or the inverter will give this DC injection. Again, you need to verify uh, the IGBT section uh, or uh, um, the or the DSP uh, DSP report. What is the report is coming? Accordingly, uh, maybe there was some issue in the IG, IGPT or the AC measurement also, AC measurement card as well. So one more thing is uh, all these issues are settable. Means if there's a problem, only these fault will come. If it is, let's say, about around certain amount of time, or after certain amount of time, uh, those error will reset. So accordingly, inverter will reset itself and will start accordingly, automatically. Again, the leakage current, um, inverter is sensing uh, more than 300 or in certain cases, 600 milliamps of current. Uh, if it is going above that, inverter will trip. Or in certain cases, uh, it will also decrease the, your output power as well to safeguard the leakage current. In When it coming the leakage current, you need to check the insulation uh, on the DC string as well as on the AC cables as well. Um, 017, that means there's the unbalancing in the phase current of AC. Um, it can be an uh, error issue or it uh, may be a uh, problem with the AC measurement card. So we need to check accordingly and uh, take the solution accordingly. Uh, for this, you also need to check with the clamp meter what is the actual current is going uh, in your all three phases. And you can also verify it is uh, inverter issue or it is uh, some outside issue as well. Zero to four, zero to five. Uh, that means there is uh, a DC midpoint shift. Uh, usually, uh, in an inverter, uh, there's a bus. Uh, there's a bus capstance which make a voltage across your IGBTs uh, half and half. If this point shifted to, towards the positive or negative, uh, inverter uh, IGBTs cannot function uh, in that manner. So they will give an alarm uh, in. Sunburn inverter is 0 to, 0 to 4, 0 to 5. Mostly if there are any issue with IGBTs as well, in that case also it can give 0 to 4, 0 to 5. Zero to 3, 6, which is temperature high. Somehow the internal temperature uh, in the IGBT is heat sink is increasing. That's why it is giving alarm. It can be due to there is uh, there's a obstruction in the airflow. It can be due to some um, uh, this temperature sensor issue, and it can be due to uh, some IGBT, IGBT heat sink paste or IGBT as well. Uh, 
it's depend upon how we analyze and how data we analyze then accordingly we can say this is the actual problem in 038 um, uh, as most of you know uh, uh, most of the inverters are ec synced uh, especially string inverters are ec synced that means uh, uh, your dc is uh, there and only after the synchronized your inverter will sync to grid so there is a relay uh, in between the grid and the inverter which uh, used to operate as soon as it's synced to the grid in case that relay is not able to uh, connect with the grid or give uh, any feedback issue in that case it will give a relay fault which is 038 uh, most of these issues are reset resetable automatically but in case it is not setting that means there's some issue with the relay board in 039 which is uh, this this issue is very common uh, usually comes in the morning uh, as soon as the some moisture hit your dc field or there is a rain happened in in the location or in the field um, some of the strings have some low insulation and inverter will sense those uh, low insulation strings and will not start or in some cases stripped as well. 040, that means your, uh, over, your, uh, your uh, basically it is a over current. Uh, in case there is an issue with your IGBT, uh, the inverter, since there's a different amount of current passing through or different uh, different current is going through phases in that case or in the in case of short circuit, it can detect a huge uh, rush of current or DI by DT is too high. Then in that case, it will show a 040. Okay, 041 um, means so there's a leakage sampling fault. Again, uh, uh, as per the uh, mm, the leakage current which is there uh, it is sensing more than 300 or 600 milliamps in that case uh, inverter is showing this uh, 041 also the cts which is uh, measuring this uh, leakage uh, leakage current can also can also be faulty again uh, Inverters uh, having temperature sensors inside the bar, inside the inverter, which can which uh, measure the ambient temperature or the incoming air temperature. If it is going high, it will show a 0 043, uh, 0 043 temperature alarm. Again, 0480490050 means there is a, some uh, current issues, current sampling issue with A phase, B phase, C phase. Uh, based on the input that is 0, 048 it is a phase if it is 049 is b phase accordingly c for c phase it is 050 so you can check which which input you need to check with the clamp meter and verify with the actual reading on the app and uh, 448 to 471 uh, that means you have some uh, reverse connection on the field uh, on the string side or the dc connection side so you need to verify which input have uh, this reverse connection and uh, reverse the polarity as a solution. Um, usually what is happen is if the current is, uh, if the reverse connection is more than eight amps, inverter you should trip. If it is inverter is uh, less than eight amps, inverter can run, but will always give a uh, warning or alarm, continuously alarm of this reverse polarity with this, uh, with the input which string have this uh, reverse polarity. Again, 070 fan alarms. Uh, in case of any issue with the fans, um, it will give a 070. You can check uh, fan status on the app and verify which fan have the issue. Let's say uh, if it is fan one is failed, it will display one. If it is let's say fan seven, it will display 64. For SPDs, uh, you have AC SPD issue and DC SPD issue, which is 071 and 072. In case there is a surge happened from the grid side or let's say from the PV side, the respective SPD will, will go out to the system or will, uh, will damage itself and uh, protect the inverter. 
in that case you will see a 071 and 072 Similarly, as I told you, uh, there are, uh, let's say the current is uh, less than three amps. In that case, inverter will continue to run, but it will give a DC reverse alarm. So you need to check which input have this uh, DC reverse alarm and verify it in the field and then reverse the connection to make it correct. Similar goes for DC abnormal current. Uh, usually, uh, in case there is some abnormal current on the PV side, one of your string having eight amperes, one of the string have one ampere. In that case, string uh, inverter can sense this abnormality or the difference between the two input or two string inputs and can uh, give you alarm, DC input alarms. So this is uh, majorly on the troubleshoot. Um, these are all uh, the usual problems or the most of the problems which uh, used to come. Uh, we try to give you the definitions as well as some solutions to how to detect it and how to correct it. Now, uh, CX version, uh, all those inverters are uh, without display. So you need to have some interface to communicate or to connect with the inverter. So uh, Sun Group provide you the iSolar Cloud app, which you can download uh, through Play Store uh, or uh, the Google Store and uh, can access the inverter data, running data, as well as the health of the inverter. So also to just for a basic interface, uh, there is an icon on the front side or the front face of the inverter, which is similar like uh, which you're seeing here. Okay, so as per the color um, color of the this LED, uh, it used to give the uh, state of the inverter. Let's say if it is steady blue, that means inverter is connecting to the grid and operating normally. If it is uh, blue, but it is uh, flashing, let's say frequen frequency of this flashing is fast, that means your Bluetooth is okay, but inverter has had some fault. If it is flashing, but uh, have some delay, that means your DC side as or the AC side is powered, but device is under standby or it going to be started. That means not connecting with the grid. If it is steady red, that means uh, inverter is in fault and cannot connect to the grid. If it is flashing red, that means your Bluetooth connection is connected, but uh, um, there is some data communication data uh, and data is communicating, but there is a fault occurrences also there. If it is off, means your DC side as well as uh, AC side is powered down. Um, inverter do not have any uh, any energizing source. When you open the app, uh, this is the basic layout. Uh, you can see the home screen, and then uh, there is a four sub menus are there, which is home, uh, running information, uh, history records, as well as more functions. If you want to see the history of the inverters, uh, let's say we have fault and alarms, your power generation or events, you can go to history records. If you want to set parameters uh, or you want to check the network parameters or system parameters, you need to go to more and do the parameter setting and then system parameter setting. So as soon as you open the app on your mobile, you will see the login access. Um, basically, there are two things. Uh, the one thing is during the commissioning, you can access via Bluetooth, that is the local access, and check the inverter uh, uh, network with the inverter name, inverter serial number name. Uh, you have to connect with this, uh, connect with that Bluetooth, or in some cases, it is uh, Wi Fi as well. Uh, you can enter this information to access the login or the Bluetooth. After that, um, the wizard will ask you the country or the region you are uh, going to connect. Uh, make sure you connect uh, as per the location of the plant. 
if you are in india you connect with the indian re india region if you connect in dubai or uae you connect with the uae region because uh, the parameters of the grid will change accordingly so this is the main home screen of the app uh, the above you see the date the uh, status of the inverter as well as this pid recovery function if it is off or on uh, then you see some graphical representation of the dc side uh, how much power is there the serial number of the inverter as well as how much power is going towards the grid then this is uh, what is active power at the moment the total yield and the uh, today yield as well as the total yield of the inverter then uh, a day wise uh, graphical representation of the curve of your active power then on the bottom side you have uh, the whole the sub menus or the buttons uh, to access more information or the more sub menus in the app so if you want to see the run information uh, you can go and check all the information which is there regarding the dc your dc voltage your dc current as well as the ac side your ac frequency your total uh, output power or the apparent power or your monthly generation similarly you can see the voltages on the grid, uh, ac side as well as the current you can also see the temperature inside the ambient temperature inside the inverter as well as some other parameters like uh, uh, you what was the uh, insulation resistance in the morning as well as the country setting or any command info then you can check the history your alarm records your power rate records as well as the event records so let's say in case of alarm records you will see a certain uh, information like this uh, your fault your fault information when it occur and what is the level and also when you click this it will give the detail of the fault as well so what is the actual uh, problem is it will give a description of the fault as well when you select this one Similarly, when you go to more, there are some more parameters which you need to access while doing the commissioning um, or uh, putting or for the grid support. Let's say you want to put some system parameters like date and time, languages, you can set in system parameter. Uh, for the communication parameter, you need to connect. Let's say you can need to connect your SCADA or any monitoring solution. You need to provide all the parameter in communication parameters. Similarly, you can give the access, uh, you can make an access level to other, um, your other team members uh, on this app or let's say Isola Cloud. Then these are protection parameters, that is grid side protection parameters. There are some settings in the advance uh, which uh, may be required while doing the troubleshooting, uh, especially uh, on part when you're doing remote support, taking remote support from the SunGrow service partners or SunGrow team members, you need to, you may need to access this advanced parameters as well. Also, uh, uh, while troubleshooting, they can ask you to download the log. Uh, so you need to download this log and send it to SunGrow team. Also, you can check the firmware update. Uh, if you need to update, you can access this. Uh, you can do this uh, firmware update by this, uh, selecting this option. Also, uh, like I told you, you can set date and time, also your location, your language. In the operation parameters, you can set the active power and reactive parameters, your runtime parameters, your grid support functions like LVRT and HVRT, as well as frequency derating, the frequency droop functions. Similarly goes for like advanced setting, uh, like in case, there are requirements from the grid or from the local operator. Uh, you can set all these uh, parameters like reverse current samples, production time, or unbalancing power. So you can set as per the requirement from the local operator. So that's it from my side. This is uh, what we covered or what we have for troubleshoot. Uh, first, we cover the uh, installation commissioning and then bit on the troubleshoot part. Thanks, yeah. Rabo. Uh, thanks for a nice and uh, 
uh, you know long session uh, good you have covered i think all the troubleshootings and commissioning part uh, let us pick up some questions before we get into the polling sessions and we close this uh, uh, there is a question asked by uh, basic question asked by the uh, what is efficiency and the warranty it is warranty standard warranty is five years expenses are here in the um, web of uh, uh, commissioning your opinion you have mentioned there's another question which is there uh, mentioned uh, uh, what are the key components in this CX series number and orders which are normally replaced or uh, uh, where the replacement is required? Usually, um, uh, usually uh, while doing the warranty services for inverter, we mm -hmm. most of the time, let's say for 80% time, we are replacing the inverter itself. Only for small, small parts we are doing on site. But when you have some issue, most of the time we are sending you a replaced product, replaced inverter. Okay. I let me also keep uh, the attendees informed that uh, we keep a stock at Dubai for these type of replacements to take care, uh, which becomes a very handy. Normally, for some uh, certain key clients or on a regular client, we offer on an hourly basis, you know, 48 hours of a uh, I mean, less than that actually has a downtime to place the inverters and the inverters is repaired at a later stage and kept in the stock for the next replacement if it is required. Uh, Mr. Bhagat Singh Mahindran has actually raised his hand. So, Mr. Bhagat Singh, if you are available, I will give a mic to you. Uh, you can... <laughs> you can ask, yeah. Mr. Bhagat Excuse Singh? me, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, actually, how we can able to create a PL performance ratio and other things? Well, Hello? Would you like? Yes. Yeah, I'm not, sorry, uh, can you repeat your question? I'm not able to hear you correctly. Uh, yeah, actually, I just want to add PR, performance ratio. Okay, so actually you can do the PR, uh, but it will not be by the inverter. It will be by the ISOLA cloud. So you need to connect the weather monitoring as well with the inverter. Oh, yeah, yeah. After weather monitoring, and uh, one more thing, we just want to add energy meter also. Correct, correct. Yeah. So all those systems, systems all the PR systems. Yes. So in the ISOLA cloud, you have this PR formula there. But you need to provide the input from your plant. For plant, yeah, you take the input. Yeah, you need to provide your inverters, and your uh, weather modeling yeah. system, your uh, your energy uh, meeting system as well. Okay, okay, that is fine. And one more thing, that PR formula can be able to edit. I am not sure on this. Uh, um, because usually, yes, people tend to change it, but it is very basic formula is there. Maybe you're not able to change it, that part. Yeah, because we just want to include the temperature coefficient also. Uh, let PR me check if, it, but as of now, we cannot change this PR formula. Let me check if there any, um, like, uh, can we, can there is any, uh, like, uh, customer PR, Kind of function is there where they can put their own formula and take the input from those. Okay, then that's fine. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Mahindran. Um, there's a question asked by Mr. Abdel Nasser. Uh, he's asking uh, how the inverter controls the active and reactive power on the grid. So usually inverter can control the active power as well as the reactive power. Coming on to the active power, uh, you can set the percentage, let's say 100%, so it will give the normal power. For Consider this 100, 110 CX, it will give a 100 kilowatt 
power uh, 100%. So similarly, you can set 50%, it will give a 50 kilowatt, provided your DC have this much of power in the field. If you're, if the DC power is, let's say 50 and you putting 80 kilo, uh, 80%, it will not give you 80 kilowatt. So you can need to set the percentage and if the power is there, you can, uh, the inverter will produce as per the set uh, percentage of active power towards the grid. Now for the reactive power, it is similar, but there are two or three modes, uh, like as per the voltage or you need to consider the power factor, or you can put the absolute terms of reactive power. So accordingly, as per the function chooses by the user, inverter will uh, produce the reactive power as well. But there is a trade-off, uh, means uh, how much reactive power you are producing, it will be the trade-off between the active power. So if you produce more reactive power, your active power will reduce accordingly. Good. So I think, uh, uh, Mr. Abdul Nasser, you got your answer. Uh, we are running a little short of time, so I will quickly go back to the uh, to the session now where the last uh, leg is uh, uh, on the polls we have a very small and quick uh, uh, you know questions which will be uh, displayed uh, on your screens you very uh, objective type pick up an answer and then so each question we will be providing around 30 seconds to 40 45 seconds not more than that very simple things just to just to ensure that we kept we were actually physically and mentally present during the session we did not uh, switch the system on and then we left it so here goes the first one uh, so you you can you can now uh, uh, this is all for the attendees you can answer it where is the response So question is simple. What is the discharge current of a type one plus two lightning protection? Uh, So we close this poll now. We got an answer. Uh, another 10 seconds. Thanks. Um, we'll share the results later. We go back to the to the next one now. What is the purpose of AFCI? So we, we close this poll now, go to the next. It started on thirty. It's going to have a seat.
uh, we go to the next one now. We close this, go to the next. Uh, Good, so we close this and we go for the last one. So we close this poll as well. So uh, thanks. I think I would like to, uh, with this, I would like to close the session. Uh, my sincere thanks to the SunGrow team of sparing their times and the people I know uh, uh, from India, it is it's quite late. From China, it is almost, uh, 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 you know, the night uh, around four or six hours ahead of us. So it's almost at around 11 o'clock. They spared their time from their busy schedules uh, for all of us. Uh, thanks to the SunGrow team. Thanks to the attendees who would, uh, who would also uh, able to uh, attend from their uh, schedules, which is the uh, middle of the week, and then could able to uh, spare uh, schedules. We actually have to control the number of uh, people as an attendee because uh, this session is not open for anyone and everyone. It is only for the selected handful, and the maximum uh, attendees which are allowed is uh, between 25 to 30, not more than that. So we had at almost all the sessions throughout the session, we were having it uh, close to around 28, 29 people. Uh, thanks to attendees, thanks to uh, the, the PNS team uh, as well, who has made this entire session uh, active and valid for you. And uh, see you next time again uh, with a new uh, you know, program. Thank you once again, gentlemen. Thank you. You. You can send your feedbacks. This uh, program will also be uh, made available to you uh, at a various platforms, which will be communicated through the emails.